the 15th annual Health Initiative for Men with a twist. Learn more right after this. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside the classroom. Where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits toward my bachelor's. My college is a state college within the University System of Georgia. My college is affordable. It's close to home. My college has online opportunities. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to Community Watch. My name is Greg Shropshire, and today we'll be talking about the Health Initiative for Men. And for most of you, uh, you may know this is the 15th year, but this year it's, uh, there are some changes to him. This year it will actually will include women, and so we'll be talking with three guests. We'll be talking about some of those changes and talking about some of the services you can expect to receive at the 15th Annual Health Initiative for Men and Women. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to Community Watch. And today we'll be talking about the health, health initiative for men and women and I'm joined today with three panelists who are experts in this area. And I want to thank all you for coming. And we have Dr. McCoy, who is a longtime uh, physician of Health Initiative. Mr. Curtis Adams, a member of the 100 Black Men of Rome. And you're going to kill, is it Bernice? Yes, Bernice Vasquez. Bernice Vasquez. Thank all y'all for being here with us today. Well, thank it's good you. to be here. Thanks. Now, now, Curtis, I want to start with you because uh, as a member of the 100, one of the, organiz the organization that started him 15 years ago with Harbin, for 15, 14 years, it's been the Health Initiative for Men. Correct. And so when I heard that it was the Health Initiative for Men and Women, you know, automatically I'm starting thinking, you know, what changed? And so can you kind of give us some of the, I guess, some of the reasoning behind why we it's been expanded to include uh, women now? Sure. Um, like you said, we, st we started this effort with the Harbin Urology Department uh, in 2000, 2001 was our first uh, health screening um, and it was basically a prostate awareness campaign and it kind of grew and snowballed. Uh, two years ago uh, we were approached uh, by uh, some folks that say, hey we like what you're doing for the men, do you mind if we come up with a health initiative for women? And uh, we said no, uh, we were very supportive of it. Uh, so I think they had a two-year run at it, and this year, early in our planning, um, the idea was pitched that because of all the resources, or they come from one pool, would it be possible for us to merge the two events? And so this year, it will be, we called it HIM Plus, so Health Initiative for Men and Women, and uh, if, if folks have family members that need to come out and take advantage of some of the screenings, that's fine. And potentially in the future, it'll gr grow to a family-wide screening. Uh, that's part of the preliminary planning. You, you know, over the years, I've always wondered, um, I always felt like it, it was big enough to include women because women always came. And in fact, we, <coughs> we marketed toward women because we knew if women came, they would bring their husbands or significant others. Right, correct. So really, the evolution makes sense because you have women there every year anyway. Correct. It makes sense that if we're really trying to affect community health, to take advantage of them, to take advantage of them being there on that day anyway. So it really makes sense, but I, I like the fact that it shows 
the growth and flexibility of an organization that you know you had a tradition for something but the health is bigger than than what you your brand in the sense of this and so the health of women is just as important as men and I like the fact that the 100 embraced it and said hey let's just make it with women and we're also looking at family on down the road right. so Bernice what, what role are you playing in this whole new endeavor um, so I'm with the Northwest Georgia Regional Cancer Coalition and we um, are the ones that actually started the health initiative for women um, and so we've been so you changed it <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and we work very closely with the hundred black men um, to do the um, health initiative for men and so we decided that you know it would be beneficial to combine the the two events all right now I'm curious now as Alone, we know prostate cancer, we know targeted medicine, but are there some cancers that are more specific to women that, that, uh, that I guess that are, that are suggested by data? Well, we um, offer um, breast um, cancer screenings and cervical, so we do pap smears and mammograms each year at our um, health initiative for women. Now, I know mammograms will be present this year. What about yes. cervical and... Pap, pap smears, smears, yes. Pap smears are also available. Um, mammograms are the only um, screening that require appointment. Um, but other than that, they can come in and um, they don't need appointment. Now, I can tell you for the last three years, I think the 100 has been part of a campaign to educate men about HPV. So mm -hmm. most men of the 100 are very well aware of cervical yes. cancer and how it's transmitted and some of the causes and symptoms that women see, not necessarily men. So uh, we are very aware of that, and our role in causing or, or really contributing okay, to yeah. HPV and cervical cancer. Dr. McCoy, question for you, targeted medicine. As we know over the years, the guidelines for prostate screening has changed dramatically. I know when we started some years ago, when I first started going, you know, it was, it was pretty much any guy over any guy 40 and above that was African-American, pretty much any guy 50 or above that was white, pretty much there was no age limit. Now that it's changed, and I'm assuming that's because targeted medicine, what is that about? Well, uh, targeted medicine is really, uh, I guess it's a, a new term that's been coined to uh, describe just treating the uh, actual problems and not over treating and not overspending. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people are otherwise healthy and we don't need to search for uh, a lot of the things that we draw blood for. I mean, first, you used to go to the doctor's office, they might draw 10 tubes of blood just looking for everything and knowing that 80% of it's going to come back negative. Now we, we, we target uh, to the patient. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there's no need in uh, just giving every gentleman over 40 a, a prostate screening. Over, if he's African American, I still recommend that it be done over 40. But, you know, there's some uh, Caucasian uh, gentlemen who are over 40 who are high risk and will still do it in those guys, but we may not do it in just the general population. And so for that, the American Urological Association, uh, they did their little uh, data study and realized that the numbers that we were screening were really showing that the uh, higher risk groups are outlined in who we're going to screen for now. And it still remains African American men or even men of uh, any ethnic uh, background, uh, but certainly those who have a high family uh, uh, predilection for certain types of cancers, particularly prostate. So. Uh, so we're targeting to the patient. That's kind of where targeted medicine comes from. And it's a cost savings. I mean, the, uh, the American government spends most of our GNP on health care, and it's, we've got to find some ways of cutting it down and still helping people at the same time. They don't want to say that, that we're treating health care like, uh, you know, Kmart versus Macy's or whatever. But the reality is that's where we're going. Those who, you know, uh, who have money can still get what they need no matter where, but those who don't have money can still get what they should have, it just would be at a, 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 a bargain store. They'll still get what they need, it'll just be less. So, so I'm, gonna get, I'm assuming <clears throat> then if we're talking about targeted medicine, so if um, my son is 35, 30, so targeted medicine would say you, you, you're you not necessarily at high risk at 30 or 35 for prostate unless you have, I guess, a, your father maybe. Right, right. So therefore, really, <clears throat> It doesn't make a lot of economical sense and real for, to screen you now because the chances are you having a very small that's correct and, and so, so so we're really talking more about a a more specific pool of people that we're testing which saves money but also it kind of I guess cuts down on the amount of testing overall 
and like I said, if 80% or 90%, you know, or you don't expect to see it, then why are you yeah. testing for it? Yeah, targeted uh, medicine is probably more of an economical term. Uh, the term that we like to use is evidence-based medicine. Okay. We have gathered all the data and we uh, look at it and we see where the evidence is and that's where we target the, the spending or the study, the uh, labs and things like that. So. Curtis, let me uh, <clears throat> come back to you. Now, with this new evidence-based slash targeted screenings, <laughs> how is that affecting him? What's, what kind of changes can people expect on that date? All right, great question. Um, the flow is essentially the same, but what will happen once they register uh, at initially for the health fair, they'll be directed uh, and they'll ask some preliminary questions about age, family history, any other health concerns, and those gentlemen will be directed to actually register for a PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen blood test. On the day of the event, uh, we will draw uh, the lab work uh, they will process that lab work very quickly in probably seven to ten days if it's an abnormal or elevated uh, result those people will be contacted and then we will have uh, some follow-up information for them to go to have the DRE. In the past we've always did uh, the PSA blood test and then immediately folk guys would go back and do the DRE. Uh, because of some of the guidelines changes, uh, this year we will collect the PSA uh, result, get all the information, and that will be on only on men that's identified. Uh, some people outside of that target group will, will tell them, you know, uh, this test will, is not of any benefit, so we'll direct them to other screenings. So the evolution of him, where it used to be a prostate specific, prostate awareness, let's see how many prostate exams we can do, it's kind of changed and we're really focusing on total health. That's why we're including the women's screenings, uh, men's screenings, so we'll do more of that type. Of, so know. really then, in all honesty, we should have more men coming because they no longer have to do the DRE. <laughs> so more men should be coming, but that ne doesn't necessarily mean more men would be actually tested. Because if you don't make, meet the requirements, you're going to be, you've been formed, you don't meet the high risk requirement or you don't meet the age requirement. So we thank you for coming. Please proceed in the other screenings. Yeah, yeah. And we, we'll help them through that process. I mean, we, uh, with the support of uh, Bernicia and their group, and we'll have plenty of volunteers, uh, we'll make that process seamless. I mm -hmm. mean, it'll be very easy. Uh, the line should not be backed up, and we hope to facilitate uh, serving a lot more people today of the event. Now, uh, Bernice, I know one of the things we're doing this year is that since we are including women, what are some of the services that will be provided for women specifically? For women specifically, like I said, the mammograms, and I'll give the number um, for mo women to call, pap smears, um, and those are just the two targeted for women, but they can also get, you know, like uh, the glucose um, screening, um, glucose and cholesterol checks, um, vision, dental, um, oral cancer screenings, which is cancer. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the some of the other screenings, but just targeted for women are Pap smears and mammograms. So really, you have some uh, screenings specifically for men, specifically for women, and then you have universal screenings. Exactly that are for, for, everyone. for every, everyone yes and so uh i mean that that makes sense but we will we do want to emphasize that for women in order to get the mammogram you will have to call and make an appointment ahead of time and we'll make sure to give out that information in the next segment but we don't want women showing up expecting to take a mammogram and find out you know you have to have an appointment that's right but they will be able to do a mammogram and a pap smear yes pap smear they do not need to make an appointment they can just come in and uh, register and get in line all right so we're going to take a break in a little bit but when we in the next segment i want us to kind of focus on you know how the education part because with a lot of health screenings you know we you do a lot of work to provide the services but the education because I think it's important that you know I've learned over the years when I see my doctor and having really conversations about my overall health and some of the things I can do.
stay with us. We'll be right back with more Community Watch right after this. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside of the classroom where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits to a bachelor's. My college is a state college within the university system of Georgia. My college offers courses that fit my schedule. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to Community Watch, and uh, if you join, just join us, we're talking to three panelists about the 15th Annual Health Initiative for men and women this year. So women, make sure you come out, not to just bring out your husband or significant other, but come out to, take for, uh, to participate in the screenings that are there for women as well. Before we went on break, Curtis, I, I wanted us to talk a little bit about the education, and what I mean about that is that, you know, it seems like every year people come to the health fair and you sometimes wonder if they're talking to health providers any other time of the year about their overall health. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I say that is because we always, the focus has always been on prostate, but you have glucose, you have cholesterol, you know, you have, for the African American community, a lot of preventable diseases we die from as a community, like blood pressure, things like that, diabetes and things of this nature. And I'm wondering, and even you, Dr. McCoy, as a society, are we just not doing a good, a good enough job on educating people about our overall health and I guess some of the triggers that we need to be paying attention to so that we, we are taking advantage of these tests that are available? Yeah, I agree. You're right. Uh, we're not spending enough time with education. Uh, and I think we should be taking more time and money and emphasis uh, placed on educating people so they'll know what to look for and when to look for it and to whom to get the information from. Uh, and that's something hopefully uh, the government is working on. Uh, they won't spend for that. Uh, they don't spend on preventative medicine, unfortunately. Uh, not yet. In New York it's happening. It's, it's beginning to change. In New York, uh, patients have found that symptom management is more important, or the government has found that it's more important. A lot of patients have back pain. They don't take a bunch of pills. They don't go see a bunch of specialists. They get massages. They may see an acupressurist or an acupuncturist. And because they feel better with it and it's not causing any harm and it's a lot cheaper, uh, insurance is beginning to pay so much money for those types of services. So uh, hopefully we're getting there. So, Yeah, and I, I think um, although we have the Affordable Health Care Act now, I like to say the 100 was kind of ahead of the curve by offering these free health screenings uh, early on. But some, some of our clients that's been there all 15 years, yeah, they would use this as a one-stop shop, come in and <coughs> let me at least, you know, seem like I'm taking care of myself. But yeah, a lot of people used it for that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think uh, as the population is aging, that the more informed that people are and the more in tune people are with their bodies, um, you know, th it, it helps them. Uh, one of our original members, Mr. Vaughn is 84 years old, and he says uh, all the time that if he knew he was going to be in that body for that long, <laughs> he would have taken better care of himself. <laughs> so, and I, I agree, I think more people are more health conscious and taking care of themselves. We're living longer. Yeah. You know, and, I, and the reason I, I talk about education, and it's just my, my story, I, I was drinking a lot, what I mean for us drinking, like when I went to a restaurant or something, not alcohol, I was drinking, but I would go to a restaurant, okay. I would just drink like almost a half a gallon of sweet tea before I even ordered my food. And I was having to urinate all the time. It got to the point where I was scared to drive long distances. <laughs> and so I went to the doctor one day and they said, oh, you know, you, you have strep. I said, okay, so I went home, but, I, but my mom had diabetes and she had died from diabetes complications. So I knew the symptoms, so I went back. I said, no, y'all need to check my, 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 my glucose level. And they checked it and it was like 370 something. They wanted to almost admit me. They said, we gotta get this down. If we can't get it down right away, we're gonna admit you. And I, and I chalked that up to the fact that I knew the symptoms. But, you know, it could have been very easily I could have went on. And I did have strep, but I could have very easily just said that strep and just went on with it. But I think, you know, a lot of education, because uh, 
It's free, totally free. All the screenings are free. The number of people that we get have been great numbers. You know, we've always averaged great numbers, but still, we should be averaging a lot more based on the fact that it's free and if people are more conscious of their numbers. So like now, I try to be conscious of my cholesterol level, and not only my glucose, but my cholesterol level. And so I do think, you know, education is a part of this, and I'm glad that the 100, you know, we do try to provide some limited education there. Sure. But I just think as a community, at some point, we got to really get into preventative medicine and uh, education. Yeah. Well, and just to mention, in this year's event, not only will it include women, and we're trying to evolve it into a family, a, <laughs> family, a place to go, something to do the That's third great. Saturday in August. So right. we also have uh, the Floyd County School Systems that's supporting us. They'll have a bus. So any of our uh, clients that would like to bring some school supplies and donate it, they're more than welcome. Of course, we'll be giving out door prizes. But um, August 20th, from 8 to noon at the Floyd County Health Department, we expect that we'll be prepared to receive a large amount of guests and clients. And we would like the community to come out and take advantage of the screening. That's a busy day in Rome. There's a lot of events going on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you come and you can dedicate two hours to taking care of your health, you probably can take advantage of every service there. And one time we did a tally, and it was between $1,500 and $2,000 of services that were available if you took advantage of them for free. So that's, that's good. And, and with inflation, I'm thinking it's more than that now. <laughs> it's more than 1500 mm -hmm. Bernice, uh, now for women, mm -hmm. and because, you know, women in a lot of our household really are kind of that first line of defense. Um, as men, some men, we are slow to go to the doctor. Do you see this, you know, f rolling this into a hymn with women, do you see this being uh, a way for y'all to reach out to more women and get more women involved or be more aware of their own health? Absolutely. I think that... Um just having both of them come at the same time is just easier for them to come and um, bring their husbands but also get their, their screenings as well. And sometimes, you know, at our health fair, we would have men show up at our health fair and women show up at mm -hmm. um, the health initiative for men. So it's just, it was just a smarter idea to just combine them. Now I know, so we have pap smear, we have mammograms, we have uh, the the prostate. What are some of the other screenings? Cholesterol, glucose. Are there some other screenings that and HIV? HIV testing will be provided. Um, I think a lot of people need to take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, blood pressure. Um, uh, what else? Um, are we donating blood this year? Are they going to have the? Yes. Yes. There'll, there'll be yeah. um, blood. Blood assurance will be there. Yeah. And um, people will, can come and donate yeah. blood. Bariatric screenings. Yeah. For the okay. overweight. Now you know I learned this at. I don't know which health fair, Curtis, but I learned is at him. You know, African Americans suffer or are plagued more from uh, what's the, uh, the blood disease? I can't think of it, but the plasma, uh, sickle cell. Sickle cell. Yeah. So, African Americans, <clears throat> we tend to get less than anybody, but you know, sickle cell. You just can't use anybody's blood for sickle cell. Primarily, needs to come from African Americans, if, and the plasma they can use for that. So, I know when I was talking to them years ago that. That, that day they, they screened, they took blood from more African Americans on that day than any day of the year. So not only are you coming out and have a great opportunity to learn about your health, but you also have a great opportunity to give back by donating blood and things of that nature, but also while you're there to have an HIV screening. I okay. mean, because HIV, we know the transmission is just not, there's other forms of transmission and we, and it's, and the numbers are still growing. Exactly. And I think Last we talked to Frank, African American women were one of the largest groups of new cases. Mm -hmm. So there's still a need in our community for HIV. I think sometimes we forget about that as well. But and they also provide a, I'm sorry, ahead, but no, they no, also no. provide a lot of education. Um, Frank comes out with his group and they do the screenings, but they also give out information. So I think it's beneficial for you know women and men to both take advantage of the education that's provided at the um, health fairs. I'm wondering. Um, with the changes, Curtis, are you are you a little apprehensive or concerned that men not fully understanding the process, or or some men may feel like some men may feel like they need a DRE, yeah. and since the the DRE has not been offered, that we may lose some people. Well, we we 
we hope not to lose anyone, and we're going to spend a lot of time on the front end making those services. In. And if we have somebody that's just that's needs to be checked, we'll we'll make whatever accommodations that we we need. I know the benefit of the old process is we could do it one time, be, it's right. there and done. Um, but as guidelines change, I mean, we're, we're just having to adjust. Um, all the urology groups still think community health fairs are good. It's just the process has changed because uh, of some of the things Dr. McCoy has mentioned. So we, we will make sure that uh, well care is what we want to do at the health fair. So we'll make sure we give them a good confidence and they'll have resources uh, even after they get their initial screening to be able to follow up and take care of that. Well, let me ask you, and I just want to be clear about this, because in the past, if I came, I had my PSA, or the blood test, and then I had my DRE, so I, so I didn't have to pay for that. Right. So let's now say a guy comes, he does his PSA, is high and elevated, and so now he needs to go for more testing. Correct. Right. With, with, with their, will follow-up testing come at a cost, or are we working to try to make sure they can get that follow-up, if necessary, that that yeah. follow-up exam can take place? Yes, we're uh, twofold. We're trying to make sure that the DRE uh, services are provided for them to have that digital rectal exam, and then we're also trying to provide resources to make sure that they get into a specialist if they need to see it. So we're, we're still working those relationships. So we, uh, what we did in the past, um, we once we got the results, we would send them a letter and we would give them a list of all the um, places that they could be seen. So they, they don't have just one option, they have several options to choose from okay. for that follow-up care. For free? For, yes. For free. <coughs> That's what I was concerned about. I mean, I didn't want men to think, well, you know, yeah. if I go and do this first test, but then that second test calls, you hate yeah. to lose somebody between that first and second test yeah. if they think it's a cost associated. But so, but it's still, it'll be free. Yeah. They can go see somebody if they need yeah. to. Yeah. But um, we got to take another break here shortly. But when we come back, I want to make sure we give the number so women can call to make an appointment for a pap smear and give out any other contact information, Curtis and doctor, that we need to put out so that people can, if they need more information. But uh, we'll be right back with more Community Watch right after this. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Community Watch, and if you're just now joining us, we have been talking about the 15th Annual Health Initiative for Men and Women. And uh, Bernice, I know for women who are making, who want to have a mammogram, the mammogram truck will be there, but they need to call ahead of time yes. and make an appointment. What number do they need to call? They need to call 706-509-6840, option one, and that will be um, to Floyd. They need to call Floyd. Um, and just make an appointment. Okay. Is there, Curtis, any other thing we need to let people know? Is there a number they need to call or can they just go on the website or for more information? Yeah. Well, for more information, um, they can call um, our office, which is 706-291-9809. And that's our office. And we usually get questions like, um, you know, what time is the health fair going to be or what screenings are going to be offered. And so we answer those questions um, and also provide them the, um, the number for the, for the mammography. All right. So once again, that's the 15th Annual Health Initiative for Men and Women, August the 20th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon at the Floyd, Rome Floyd County Health Department. And so if you have any questions, please reach out to uh, the <coughs> North West Georgia Regional Council Coalition. They'll be happy to give you those answers. And we'll see you next week on Community Watch.